Welcome to Riverbank's Roundup. Riverbank Zoo is a fun and safe place for you, your friends, and your family to explore the world's living things. And we hope a place where you will come to appreciate and want to care for the world's animals and plant life. Here at Riverbank Zoo, we believe that taking care of planet Earth begins with you. And you can do that one step at a time. We also would like to try giving the power to the kids. Riverbanks is crawling with kids. We have school programs, zoo campers, zoo teens, and the Kids Commission. And today, some of those zoo kids are going to get the chance to learn from conservationist Philippe Cousteau. Philippe and I are going to take the kids exploring around the zoo as he shares his passion with conservation and all the world's living things. So join us today as we take an eco-adventure with Philippe Cousteau. Welcome to the Aquarium and Reptile Complex here at Riverbank Zoo. Right now I'm in front of our Indo-Pacific tank and I'm here with Philippe Cousteau, who is the Chief Spokesperson for Environmental Education for Discovery Education. Hi Philippe. Hello. Thank you so much for coming to chat with us today. I'm delighted to be here. Great. I've got some really good questions for you. In 2000, you started um, Earth Echo International. Why this project? Well, Earth Echo International is a nonprofit. Actually, my sister and I started okay. in honor of my father. And so it was important for us to both recognize all my father and his work in conservation over the years. But also, we're, we're, um, we're dedicated to youth engagement, youth education, mm -hmm. and youth service and service learning. And um, there's, it's, it's, you can't have enough education, environmental education, I think, out there. Exactly. So we're really uh, helping to add to the course and inspire kids. I agree with you. Um, Earth Echo, you actually, you've said if we truly want to save our water planet, youth are the solution. How are youth the solution? What can we do? Well, you know, I think that uh, a good friend of mine um, uh, runs Youth Service America, which is a national youth service organization. Okay. And uh, he has a great phrase that says, uh, if we don't have a youth strategy, we don't have a strategy at all. And I agree with that. I think that uh, young people have a tremendous amount of power, not only to affect their own lives and the lives of their friends, but to affect the lives of adults and of course the lives of, uh, and the business practices of corporations uh, mm -hmm. that are marketing to them and selling products to them. And so, uh, you know, survey after survey talks about how, uh, when we ask CEOs and business leaders, why do you adopt more environmentally friendly practices? They say, because of our kids. Really? Um, so it's, uh, I, you know, I like to say that, that youth are not only the leaders of tomorrow, they're the leaders of today in the amount of power that they have to change the world. They do have a lot of power. Our kids here at the zoo are amazing with the stuff they do. We have a recycling project, they do river cleanup, we're really busy. I also read that you said that the next 50 years are pretty critical if we want to have fresh water and clean water here in America and everywhere along the world. What are some things that you think we may be able to change in the next 50 years? Well, you know, it, it is the next 50 years, which are our 50 years. Uh, you know, the last 50 years has seen the greatest amount of exploration uh, of the planet but it has also seen some of the greatest destruction of the planet. It's amazing what can happen in, in a relatively short period of yeah. time. And I think that going forward, all the great things that we can do as individuals is really leading by example. Uh, one of my biggest pet peeves is plastic, single-use plastic bags. I, uh, I, I really have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea of, of really thinking about how we behave, how we act every day, and maybe just uh, using reusable bags or not using bags at all. You know, I, I always go to a pharmacy or something, I see somebody with a big bag, and they put a little box of you know, Tylenol or something in there yeah. and they give it to somebody and they use it for 10 minutes and then throw it out and it's going to exist on this planet for, for, for millennia. Um, and all the things, easy things to do, looking about where you, where you buy your food, trying to get, you know, local food and uh, um, also thinking about where you go on vacation. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of hotels and, and businesses are starting to be more green and that's easy to find on the internet. Um, you know, those kind of simple things that we, that we do every day. Um, to make a positive difference. Yeah, and there are really easy, simple things that 
anybody can do, kids, adults, just as one person. Absolutely. And you know what? We have a rule in, uh, um, in the youth education service world. It's called the 10-10-10 rule. Okay. We know that one individual can impact the behavior of 10 people around them and that those 10 people typically then carry on that message to 10 people around them. So when you think that one individual can have the impact on a thousand people, we can really, uh, we can out. really, we can really change the world. Mm -hmm. I read a blog where you wrote about meeting a gray whale and its baby, and I, it was a beautiful scene, just imagining what was going on. But you've had the opportunity to travel all over the world and see how everyone is connected by water. You've had that opportunity. Now, how can you pass pass that passion and that knowledge on to someone who? might not be able to have that opportunity to travel. Well, you know, that's, uh, that's the wonder of technology today. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, why I'm so pleased to be able to work with Discovery Channel, Animal Planet, and Planet Green. Well, thank you so much for answering those questions. We've got a lot of really amazing things here at Riverbank Zoo that we'd like to show you. Looking you want to come uh, explore the zoo? Yeah. All right, let's, let's go. It. in the radiated tortoise yard at Riverbank Zoo with our Kids Commission and our zoo teams. There's some awesome kids that are here with us at Riverbank Zoo and I want to learn a little bit about our zoo team program. So one of our zoo teams is Kelly. Hi Kelly. Hi. Can you tell us just a bit about what the zoo team program is and what you do? Sure. Um, we're all about high school age. We're all in high school and what we do, we come during the summer, Monday through Thursdays and during school we come every other Sunday. And we're kind of like an outreach program. We go out to boys and girls clubs during the summer and we do presentations with education animals and we teach them about ways to conserve and how to help the environment. And um, during the school year, we usually do stuff in the zoo, like small presentations in the zoo and stuff like that. You guys are so good at those presentations and I love when you take the animals out and the guests really like that too. And your recycle project is something new. I've seen the recycle cans around the park. That's awesome. You guys are doing a really good job. All right. Okay, kids, I know you've got some questions for Philippe, so let's start over here with Grant. Mr. Grant, can you ask your question? What can the everyday kid do to help stop pollution in our freshwater areas? Well, Grant, that's a great question. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that we can do. Certainly ourselves, um, we have a big influence on our parents. And, uh, you know, everything, there's lots of different types of pollution. You've got chemical pollution, so the kind of cleaning products and the shampoos and uh, the soaps and things you use at home. Uh, it's, it's great to try and use ones that are biodegradable and environmentally friendly. And also, I, I talked about this a little earlier, plastic bags, I really hate plastic bags. So encouraging your parents to use reusable bags when they go to the grocery store. And then, um, you know, another thing, um, when, when your parents get their cars washed, uh, I don't know if any of them ever do it in the street or in the driveway, but taking them home, um, not doing car washes at home, but taking them actually to uh, um, a professional car wash that recycles the water is another really easy thing people can do to, uh, to help water quality in their towns. Great question, Grant. Sure. Thank you. All right, Katie, I think you have a question too. Have you always wanted to do this? You know, actually when I was little, I wanted to be, um, when I was little, I wanted to be a fireman. Uh, but then as I got a little older, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty much being able to explore and work in film and work with Discovery and Discovery Education and um, it's been something I, I, I've always looked forward to doing. And you've always wanted to come to Riverbank Zoo, right? This is actually on my bucket list. And, awesome. Uh, at the top five, and now I just get to check it off finally. So. Check. Indeed. D'Angelo, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Um, what joy do you get from doing all of your work? You know, my favorite thing, I think, about doing what I do, um, two things, actually. One, I, I do love going out in the field and getting to explore and diving with great whites and giant squid and working in you know, Tasmania and Africa and the Arctic. But uh, I love doing this especially because, uh, you know, when I get to work with, with students and, and youth, um, which is the nonprofit that I run, that's what we're dedicated to, and I see them get excited about the world around them and get to understand how much power they have to make it a better place. Uh, if I have a small part of that, that's uh, my favorite part of my job. Who else had a question? Me. All right, Sammy. What is the most amazing experience you had with an animal? You know, I think one of the most amazing experiences I ever had in, with an animal was actually uh, um, we talked about a little earlier with the gray whales. Mm -hmm. I was down in, uh, in the Gulf of California, so in Baja, Mexico, on the Pacific side of the peninsula. And female gray whales come down there in the springtime. Actually, let's see, it's around March now, so around now. 
they can be found uh, down there giving birth to their babies. Um, and now, I don't know how big you were when, when you were born, but uh, a baby gray whale is about uh, almost a ton when it's born, and uh, you know several, six, you know, bigger than a lot bigger than me. So they're big babies uh, right off the bat. Like the size and, of an uh, elephant. Yeah, it's uh, it's like a baby. Yeah, exactly, like a baby elephant uh, when they're born, and they uh, they're very friendly. They're known as friendly whales. So they, the female, the mothers, will bring the baby gray whales to you when you're in a boat, and you'll be sitting there far away because you shouldn't ever approach a marine mammal in in, in the wild. You should always keep your distance. But down in Mexico. Um, we stop a few hundred or a thousand yards away from them and the females will actually swim to the boat and come right out of the water, right in your face and look at you, these huge gray whales that are 50 feet long like a school bus and then their babies that are like a little, uh, um, a little smart car uh, comes right out of the water and they'll hang out and they're just as curious about us as we are about them. So to have that kind of uh, an interaction, a respectful interaction with those whales was one of the best experiences of my life. Alright Shelby, uh, what is your favorite animal? I think my favorite animal are sharks, actually. I've been diving with a lot of sharks in my life, and um, they're not at all the scary monsters that everyone thinks they are. Uh, they may look a little scary, and we watch movies like Jaws, which are total uh, fantasy, but um, sharks are not the killers we all think they are. There's only about uh, you know five or six fatal shark attacks a year in the world. And you think there are hundreds of millions of people in the, that go in the ocean, so they're not nearly as scary as everyone thinks they are. I think they're fantastic. What's your favorite animal, Shelby? Mine is probably a horse because I own a horse. I don't think I like horses. Who else loves horses here? Lockdown All right, everybody loves horses. Well, almost everybody. Almost everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, guys. You had some really great questions, and I, I loved hearing the answers. They were there. great questions. Aren't they good Thank kids? you. Fantastic. Yeah, great. We at Riverbanks are really passionate about sea turtle conservation. We even have two sea turtles on exhibit right now. And they're part of a Head Start program where we partner with the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources as well as the South Carolina Aquarium in Charleston to house and display these turtles so that children from all across the state can learn more about how to save them in the wild. Um, there are many problems that sea turtles face, including bycatch, which is where they get caught in fishermen's net. And the fishermen don't want to catch sea turtles, but the nets aren't designed properly and the sea turtles get caught. So that's a major problem, as well as uh, overfishing and habitat destruction. The sea turtles uh, live in habitats like reefs, um, like you would see at riverbanks, and um, their habitats are being destroyed. So we bring that message to students, and um, we keep these turtles here for about two years, where we can learn about them, where they get to grow and be strong, and then we tag them so that we can monitor them in the future, and they actually get released back into the ocean, where they can live and grow. And if they're females, they'll actually come back to the beach where they were born, here off of our coast in South Carolina, and lay eggs, which is where we get them and the whole program starts all over again. So we're just really excited to be able to participate in conservation of sea turtles here at Riverbanks. As part of the Zoo Team program, we get to choose a conservation project that we like to work on. This past year, we joined forces with the Green Team to bring an in-park recycling program to the zoo. As part of the Zoo Teens Recycling Project, the Zoo Teens went out to the bins and looked in to see what people were putting in the bins. When we looked in, we saw things that weren't exactly recyclable, so we decided to put signage on the bins so people would know exactly what to put in the bins. Okay, I've got the Kids Commission and the Zoo Teens down here by our Saluda River. Have you guys been down here before? Mm -hmm. Yes. What kind of stuff have you done down here at the river? Fishing. You went fishing? I went fishing and had my birthday party at the zoo and we went down here. You had a birthday party down here. Anything, anybody ever been camping down here or just walking around to look at the animals and stuff? Yeah. Some of you? Okay, that's awesome. There's lots of animals down here. What kind of animals do you think we would find down here by the river? What do you think, Kelly? Geese. Geese, we could definitely see some geese. What about you? Turtles. Turtles, awesome. Fish. Fish, Fish are very important. Ducks. You could definitely see some ducks. I saw some earlier. Now we are about to do a river cleanup. Now we went over the rules of the river cleanup, but why is cleaning up the river important? What do you think? Um, because the river flows to the ocean and it would help 
um, get less pollution in the ocean and other streams on Lake Carolina. Yeah, our river, it flows through South Carolina and it's headed all, all over the state and some rivers do flow into the ocean. So us cleaning up this area, we're actually helping the other waters as well and the animals that live there. Philippe, do you know of any reasons why maybe keeping the water area here clean is important? Well, I think that was, that was one great point. We like to say we all live upstream from one another. So uh, mm -hmm. everything that we do in our own backyards affects the rest of the world. But of course, all those critters, uh, the fish and, and all the other things that live here in the river need a healthy river too exactly. um, to live in so that, uh, so that they don't suffer from pollution, from it, our pollution. That's not very fair for us to pollute the river and hurt all those it's animals. It's not, not those animals. And I've got one of those animals here. You guys want to see one? Mm -hmm. Okay, who I have here is an animal that actually came right here from the Saluda River. This is our friend, the spotted salamander. Oh. And salamanders live all along the banks of the river here and throughout South Carolina and actually throughout the Southeast. So you can find spotted salamanders all over South Carolina and the south, Southeast. Now salamanders are amphibians. Does anybody know what is special about amphibian skin? What's special about their skin? Do you know, Olivia? Can they breathe air from their skin? They can, they can breathe air from their skin. So their skin is incredibly sensitive. So when we do things like, I'm gonna put this box down for a second. When we do things like clean up their habitat or their home, we are helping them because if they get pollutants, um, different things inside their skin, it can make them really, really sick. And the great story about this spotted salamander is the zookeepers here at Riverbanks noticed that there weren't as many salamanders as they once were down here by the river. So they came down here and they collected a bunch of salamander eggs and they hatched them here at the zoo. And this spotted salamander is one of those. And when they get big enough that they could survive on their own, they're going to release them right back where they came from, back down here by the river. And we're hoping that we'll have lots of salamanders. So are you guys ready to help me clean up the salamander's habitat? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Guys, I want you to look for trash and recyclable materials. We're gonna have two separate bags. We'll put the trash in one bag and the recyclable material in the other. And where's D'Angelo and Kevin? D'Angelo and Kevin are right. All right, D'Angelo and Kevin. D'Angelo and Kevin are going to be to keeping track of the stuff that we find. Now, do you guys think we'll find more trash or more recyclables? What do you think? Yeah. Think we'll find more trash? Really? Yeah. What kind of stuff might be considered trash? Yeah. What do you think? Like a paper cup. A paper cup, maybe? Well, sometimes we can recycle paper, but that's a good idea. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Well, maybe you can tell me what are some things we can recycle. What's something we can recycle? Yes. Um, we can recycle bottles. Yeah, like plastic bottles. What else? Aluminum cans. Aluminum cans. Very good. Anything else? Bimetal cans. The bimetal cans, like the soup cans. All right. Are you guys ready to go look around for some stuff yeah. and get clean? Philippe, do you have any tips for these guys while we're walking around? Well, uh, you know, one of the things that I was thinking about that we can't recycle, but that you do find a lot along riverbanks, is fishing line and fishing gear and old fishing hooks. So uh, that, 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 that can be very dangerous because they can get wrapped around animals' uh, throats and, and really injure animals and keep on fishing along the river. So that's one thing that you can't recycle, but also something you have to be careful of, is, um, as you heard. We need to make sure we don't touch any glass or anything sharp, but especially look for uh, fishing hooks yes. um, because those are very dangerous as well. So be very careful when you're along the river and uh, have fun. We're going to make a good positive difference today. Yeah. Love All it. right. You guys ready? Yep. Oh, okay. Let's go. We're going to spread out in this area and you guys look for stuff. So clean, cleaning up um, beaches, is it similar to a river or what kind of stuff do you find there and what's important to look on a beach area? Well, you know, it's... Uh, um, I have been to beaches all over the world, and it's a big problem, marine debris is what we call it, formally, all the stuff floating, a lot of plastics in the ocean. And yeah, you know, I've been to Mozambique and, uh, and seen trash along the beaches in parts where there is nobody living for 100 miles. I've been to, uh, through the Caribbean and seen the islands there that are deserted islands still with mounds of trash. And I've even been up to the Arctic, and you know, uh, I saw I remember I saw some flip-flops on the shores at some of the islands in, in, the, in, Arctic? in the Arctic. And nobody wears flip-flops in the Arctic. I so that was coming that from would. far away. And that's something that, that we were talking about earlier, 
that you know we all live upstream from one another and it's true what we do here people wearing flip-flops in sunny areas the ocean currents can carry that all the way up to the top of the planet and it can pollute the animals and the beluga whales and, and, and the whales and seals and crit critters that live up in the Arctic um, can be polluted by what people do in the Caribbean so it's uh, it's all connected have you ever, maybe being in the water, seen any trash or run into animals that have been affected by pollution? I have. You know, I was diving off of, uh, off of Italy, once, off of uh, an island south of Italy one time in what was supposed to be a marine preserve. But unfortunately, uh, the European Union has a lot of work to do to protect their fisheries and their oceans, especially Italy. And uh, so it was supposed to be a protected area, but there were no fish because fishing boats come in there all day and no, the, the Coast Guard just watches them do it and they don't do anything about it. And um, so what did I find? I found some old uh, wooden crates when we were diving. I found a, an old toilet seat, uh, an actual toilet uh, underwater. I found tires, um, uh, bunched up fishing gear, and all sorts of things in the ocean. What yeah. can something like fishing gear or fishing line, what would that do to an animal? Well, fishing line is very, very dangerous, and nets. We saw lots of ghost nets down there, essentially nets that uh, the fishermen put out in the water and then because of a storm or they get snagged on something, they just cut them loose. And well, nets don't fall apart. They're made out of uh, you know, nylon and fishing line, which doesn't really degrade in the environment. Mm -hmm. So they last for a very, very long time and they do their job very well. They just keep catching stuff and stuff gets caught in the nets, dies, and attracts other stuff to come and eat it. And then that gets caught in the nets and dies. And it's just this forever these nets and there are, chain of there are hundreds of tons of nets in the ocean today that just float around killing everything um, not attached to fishing boat and then fishing line too gets wrapped around animals necks not just you know in far off places like the mediterranean off of italy but we have a big problem with marine mammals and sea turtles getting caught in um, you know those those plastic containers you have six packs of yeah, uh, sodas they, in mm -hmm. uh, or fishing line uh, we catch uh, sea turtles and dolphins and other things all the time that have this wrapped around their necks and are being choked to death. That's really sad. So lots of different things. Yeah. But we're picking up lots of good trash here. We're making some progress. Yes. I haven't picked up a single piece of trash. I feel very um, okay. We, I feel we very should... like a, like a bum here. So I need to get involved. Good job. I need to. I need to... We're uh, moving some some trash. We, we, are we going to go We down can keep moving. Trash? Let's keep moving to yeah, the. Why don't we go, go down near the river? This is a perfect example. This flip-flop could end up in the Arctic if you had not saved it. I actually did see flip-flops when I was in the Arctic floating in, in, uh, along the shores of Svalbard Islands in northern Norway. So um, I wasn't joking either. These things can travel a very, very long way in the ocean. Good job, what else Kelly. Got? Goodness. And you can play tennis and, and go have a flip-flop <laughs> in the Arctic. But we, we've saved it. Lots no, of styro oh. And styrofoam is awful. Yikes. Styrofoam is very bad stuff. Ooh. Good job. All right. That's Next. Awesome. Okay. Let's walk down this way. It's some good area down here to check out. Well, I see something. Okay. Awesome. Good job. Got anything else over there, Philippe? I have found a couple couple things. Ooh, right. and another little piece of plastic right here. Awesome. Let's just see. What kind of stuff did you find today? You know, lots of straws and, and little plastic wrappers and uh, oh. fake leaves. Fake flowers. Fake flowers. Um, lots of chip bags. Seems like people might come down here and have a snack. Yeah, a lot. You know, we've got these great park benches mm -hmm. for people to come and enjoy. And then it sounds to me, or looks to me, like they're uh, they're not respecting it very much they're because not. they're just letting their trash hang around. What is some stuff we can do instead of what happened here? Instead of just leaving your stuff behind, what should you do? What do you think, Grant? Not throw it away, recycle. Take it home with you and recycle it. That would help out a lot, wouldn't it? Awesome. Throw it away in these trash cans that are all over the place. Yes, there are trash cans. And up at the zoo, what are the bright blue things we have up at the zoo that you can put like plastic bottles in? Yeah. Recycling, bins. Recycling bins. Very good. Or you could even use reusable things. So then we wouldn't have anything to throw away, right? You could have a reusable bag or reusable lunchbox. Is that something you guys think you can do at home on your own? Awesome. You guys did such a good job. Let's see, about how many pieces of trash do you think we found today? We got any idea? About 20. About 20? What do you think? About 25. 25? D'Angelo, were you keeping up with it? 29. 29. I think they did a pretty good job. That's a very good job. Very All good right. job. All right. 
Uh, any last tips you got for these guys on how they can maybe bring home ideas of some of the stuff we talked about today? Never give up. We, uh, there's a lot of trash in the world, a lot of problems. I know you're all, uh, you're all aware of it. You see it on the news every day, but never forget. You know, there's, um, there's a saying that my grandfather always taught me. How many of you guys ever heard the saying, you can make a difference? Everybody, right? Well, not quite. Everything you do actually makes a difference. All of our choices have consequences. So to always think about it, all your behaviors, and the question we want to make, ask ourselves, we want to make a positive difference with everything we do. That needs to be our goal. So awesome. that always inspires me. That's what Good. I try and lead my life. Good words. I think we all need to try to make positive differences, right? Can I get a high five? All right. High five. All right, guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, I too. lost it all. <laughs> all right, good job today, guys. It was awesome. <laughs> all right, high all five. right. We should come up with a cheer for the bank, the uh, Riverbank Zoo. Don't, don't add it to my What is it? Give me an R. Give me an I. Is that how you guys did it? I don't get a high five? All right, down low. Too slow. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. That was cheesy, but I had to do it. And that shows how slow I am. No, that just shows how juvenile I am, actually. Did you guys have fun so far? Yeah.